quick, what would you do if you were fired by your boss for something you didn't do? Would you walk away? Or would you partner with him? Ingrained in the history and evolution of Blissfield Manufacturing is the answer to that question. Well, how does Blissfield Manufacturing go from making this to all of this? We'll find out today on Made in Lenaway. I got some new challenges that we come across every day, you know, even though we've been building these parts for 10, 20 years, you know, there's always something new that comes up. There's always, you know, new processes that we look at to try to improve our products so that, you know, our end customer is getting something better. Lenawee County at one point had lots of, lots of factories and there was the community, community was everything and the factories, without the factories, you're, your town basically dies. Just trying to see how everything comes together today from where it used to be and the, the improvements that we've been making on the plant floor through our lean activities, you know, seeing people buy into that process. Uh, it's, it's exciting to see senior people change right along with, uh, you know, the economy, right along with, you know, the trends. It's, it's exciting to watch some of that stuff. It, it seems like so much has moved out of Lenawee County and we're lucky to have Blissfield Manufacturing here. It's, it's very important. The Farvers have done a lot of good for Blissfield and then and Adrian. It's, it's pretty simple. I guess we're, we're old fashioned in the sense that, um, you know, we've got four core values, honesty, integrity, trust, and respect. That's it. You'll see it on our, there's a sign on the wall, it's to the plant. Uh, those type of things and basically people want to know if they're doing their job right or wrong It's like are you following the core values if you are keep doing what you're doing if you're not change what you're doing So you are it's pretty simple And you know we we still consider ourselves a family. It's just pretty simple You know the golden rule, you know treat others as you want to be treated. We're not real rigid and I think it's up to us if we create the environment uh, that people feel that they can uh, they can grow and learn and, and participate and be part of things. Uh, I think that's important. Blissfield Manufacturing was actually started in 1946 by my grandfather, Orville Farber. Uh, at the point in time when the company was started, he was a plant manager at Tecumseh Products, uh, working for Ray Herrick. There's a kind of a funny side to the story. Actually, there was a misunderstanding on the floor and Mr. Herrick actually fired, fired my grandfather and then found out what had gone on and tried to hire him back. Mr. Herrick had a line of uh, condensing units, which is a compressor put on a base in uh, Marion, Ohio, which uh, the volume had gone down somewhat over the years and he uh, wanted to find a new home for it. And my grandfather being a, a stubborn uh, as he was, uh, basically said, no, I don't really want to do that. And so then Mr. Herrick said, well, if you won't come back to work for me, would you be willing to do this? So he asked my grandfather if he would be interested in becoming a contract manufacturer uh, of that product and uh, start building it for him. And so that's how the company actually got started. And then every year on the uh, anniversary of his firing, um, my grandmother and grandfather would go out to dinner with Ray and Hazel Her Herrick uh, to celebrate. Those were interesting times. I mean, uh, that was a time when a lot of industry uh, was just getting started. Uh, and really in this area, uh, a lot of refrigeration industry was happening here and in Deerfield and in Tecumseh and, uh, you know, Braceway started the same uh, year we did, uh, Merrillat started the same year we did, and Catmic Insurance. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things going on in, in 1946 or that period of time. Actually, this building that we're in now started as a small uh, 5,000 square foot building. Before that, we actually ran on some space uh, in a building in downtown Adrian while this was being built. Now it's at 250,000 square feet. In uh, 1959, we had a disastrous fire that took about 80% of the building out. And my grandfather told people, you know, we got work to do, show up with a shovel the next day, we got parts to make, and so, you know, we moved on. We uh, added products to the, uh, to the line 
And also we started uh, actually making uh, some uh, heat exchangers, uh, oil coolers, power steering oil coolers for Ford Motor Company in the early 60s. Uh, also about that time we started developing um, uh, heat exchangers for off-highway equipment, tractors and you know, front-end loaders and, and those type of things. The other thing, um, I think being a good community citizen is, is really important. You know, that started with my grandfather. We always felt we should give back to the community that has supported us. And so uh, we do, uh, do a lot in the community to uh, try to foster that. Those community involvements include the Little League Field, the Blissfield Fire Department, and countless festivals and events in town. As the community has developed, so has the company and the Farber family. The company's changed a lot over the past, I would say, five years, ten years. I mean, there have been always different cycles of the business as far as, you know, where it goes and, and what it's pointing to. Our focus going on to the environmental side just as much as a lot of our uh, older, more mature products, um, which has really been interesting to see because some of our new products, such as the Pro 2 machine, are just incredible to see uh, the results. And it's, it's very interesting to go from, uh, in some instances, just making components to systems to making full systems and being able to see start to finish the way they work and uh, all the science behind it. You know, the world is a changing place and it takes a strong effort to keep up with everybody else who's trying to, to knock you off. We put out a very high quality product all across the board. We have very few returns. Um, we're known for that. And we even have our customers come back telling us, you know, we just don't have an issue with you guys. That's great to hear. That reputation is earned by workers in all areas of the company with varying experience levels. Some trace their beginnings back to the LISD Tech Center, and parents like Brian Porter now have their children taking classes. I have four sons, and three of them went through um, LISD Tech Center. We didn't know anything about it that it really existed until my first son went through and auto mechanics, uh, auto body, and he ended up um, going to compete. And when he was going through some stuff months after the com com Completion, he found out he had a free scholarship to Washtenaw, which we didn't even know about. So he went to Washtenaw for that, and he now he's continuing to Eastern. Oh, we think that's unbelievably important, just to have, have be a couple steps ahead in the game, especially for someone who's younger, without the actual business experience to try to get in. That's definitely an extra foot in the door. I had another one who um, went there for two years of drafting and now has four years in at Michigan Tech and is going to get his master's. Uh, and he loved it for the fact that he got his drafting out of the way and it really helped him advance. Going to the tech center, it gives you a jump start in jobs. Um, I actually had the opportunity to go to work for one of the companies, but uh, I was leaving for the Navy two weeks later so after I graduated, so there, I couldn't take the job. It seems like when I was there that it wasn't nearly as uh, available and, and didn't have nearly as many opportunities as what uh, what it seems to now and even the, the different facilities and buildings didn't exist uh, then, at least not all of them. Sometimes you may have somebody who, a son or a daughter who doesn't know exactly what they want to go into. What a better way to try to experience a little bit of it and see if they like it or not. And it also gets them further ahead in college when they start out. It just, it's an advantage for them and it's free too, you know. It's it's just a plus. You would not believe how many people I give positive talks to about it all the time, so I always promote it. Where I can see the, the, our place going is if you don't have some skill set defined in maintenance or in CNC equipment, it's going to get tougher and tougher for, for people to, to find jobs. I mean, if you can get bring somebody in that already has experience in doing welding, I mean, we're a big fabricator in welding here somebody that has CNC, somebody that has PLC knowledge, they're automatically, you know, moved right to the top of the list. I mean, that's what we're looking for. There's some people, that skill set today is so hard to find. I can't say enough about the hidden gem that we have. I, I, I think it needs to be promoted more within the schools as a very positive, a positive thing to do. It, it shouldn't be overlooked. I mean, it, it really helps to get somewhat educated before you step into a job like this. Yeah, I mean, you'll get, a, you'll get a head start if you have an education first. That education allows Blissfield Manufacturing to utilize workers in several parts of their facility, creating several different pieces, parts, and systems in their catalog. 
Our main ones would be oil cooler, hydraulic oil cooler for the off-road industry. Well, it's basically keeping the oil cool because those things, they're, they're running at full speed all the time, carrying heavy loads. So you want the engine to run cool or whatever components are required for it to run cooler. Mm -hmm. So you don't want things burning up on that, so. We make power steering coolers. We make receiver tanks. We make, do custom sheet metal work. Refrigeration condensers and evaporators for anybody who goes anywhere, reaches in and grabs a pop at like a Walmart out of a, a machine. We have a part in that to a vending machine taking their soda out of it's, we're everywhere. Some of our larger customers are Caterpillar, Bobcat. We definitely try to juggle what, uh, what we can do when we can do it, and we definitely try to keep them as happy as possible. Keeping customers, whether large or small, happy requires a thorough production process. As far as the condenser is concerned, uh, we start off in the sheet metal department. What we do is we lay a flat sheet of metal on our laser cutter, and there's a pattern that's designed for that to cut out the end plates for the condenser. So once that's cut off of the laser, all of the holes are cut out, everything. That's then taken to a press in order to put bends on it in order to create the feet for the condenser. Once those are set, those are set aside, uh, they get sent out you know, to the rest of the, uh, the production line. First you get your job order, okay? And then you'll have a parts list. So when I, when I get that, I'll, I'll get my cart and go gather some of the headers, the side members, and I'll put them off to the side. The other aspect of that would be the serpentine or the coil uh, for the condenser itself. So you have uh, large coils of steel or copper, depending on the material that come in, and those have to go through a straightening machine. And what they do is they get straightened and cut off to length based on how big the condenser is. Um, we also have a big tube bender, and what it does is it runs four to five tubes through at a time and creates a serpentine of all those tubes at once. The plant's broken up to different sections of plants. Plant uh, manufactures different product lines. We train our workforce to be able to work anywhere in the plant so that they're not tied to just one piece of equipment or, or one area of the, of the manufacturing floor. So once the condenser is cut, straightened, and bent, they get sent to um, sometimes a fold-over machine. Um, so these would be for tubes that need to be broken down to a, to a smaller size in order to be put through the squeeze box to have the fins put on. So we'll have an operator take the big long bent S, S tubes, put them into a fold over machine, they'll take it out, fold it over a couple of times, and then it's ready to be put into a, a squeeze box or a stacker as we'll say, and put fins on. These things are massive machines that have giant coils of steel that just run off and they just chop continuously uh, fin stock, which depending on the size obviously would be however many fins so so it chops up the fin stock puts it into a plate and then once that comes off of the uh, of the stacker you take the serpentine coil and you take the fins then you put them in a squeeze box which that does that just presses them together so it takes the fins and the tubes just meshes them into one um, and then you've got you know your coil it's almost complete so from there we take the coil to another station and that's when they put the end plates on so those metal plates they used in the sheet metal department, they slap those end plates on. From there, it's pretty much all complete. Um, they get stacked up and they moved over to the braze oven. The braze oven is 2,040 degrees. It runs seven days a week, 24 hours a day. When we put these together, they all have open sealed joints. Somehow we have to close those up. So what we do, we apply either copper powder or copper paste, which adheres to the part together and then we submit, uh, charge it with water and submerge it under a tank to check for leaks. Every product line that we have, something on that product runs through that brace oven. Whether it be, you know, the oil cooler itself, the, the grease trap, filter, condensers, everything will run through that brace oven. It's a knack, it's a knowledge to understand that brace process. People that have been here, you know, for quite a long time have that knowledge and, and the supervisor out there he grew up with it, he came off the plant floor, he knows it pretty well. So the end plates get coated with a copper paste, the fins and tubes get coated with a copper powder, they run through the braze oven. And then they come out the other end on the braze oven and you have your finished part. Um, from there, depending on the type of coating that the customer prefers, they either get sent to an e-coater, which is an electro-deposition coating, uh, or we do a dip coat, which is just a paint. We run it through uh, a dip paint, they get baked in an oven, 
and then uh, they come around the, uh, the paint and pack line. They get pulled off of a hook, packed in a nice little box, and sent off to the customer. With the oil coolers, there's a few more pieces. So similar to the condenser, you have a header that goes on the ends of the oil cooler. Um, and what, what happens with those is we get a uh, steel pipe that comes in and that has to be cut to length. And once we cut that pipe to length, we take it to a drill press. And what that does is that presses out the amount of holes that go into the end for however many tubes or rows that that uh, oil cooler may be. Also, it's put on a separate drill to drill out a collar for the fittings. And then those are taken over to, to one of the welders in order to weld end caps and fittings onto uh, those header pieces. A similar process with the condensers where you have a steel tube that comes in uh, on a big coil. We straighten that out. And with the oil coolers, they're not continuous as similar with the, um, the condensers are a continuous tube thing. So with the oil coolers, they're separate tubes. So those all get cut to length. Then I'll go to this big machine called a turbulator and we have the cooling rod set up off to the side and we'll stack them up in this machine for the turbulator and this thing, will, it'll shoot these little turbulators into the cooling rods. And after you do that, you get it and you got a little, little grinding disc. It's got a little jig in it. You stick the cooling rod in it and you put like a little uh, chamfer on it. Then you stick it through this machine and it kind of flattens it out a little bit to make it go in tight through the headers and through the fans. So you want, you want a nice tight fit. You don't want a slop in there. You don't want the fans to be you know, moving back and forth. You want it nice and tight. So once you get all those done, you wheel it over to your jig table where you have another cart full of fins, and you'll have your cart full of tubes, and you'll have your headers, and you apply the brazing compound to it, and you set your spacers, you, you line up all your fins in there, and once everything's lined up, you get your cooling rods and you kind of line them up, kind of wiggle them in there and get it in about, oh, maybe six, seven inches. Then you go in with your impact hammer and just start hammering away at it. So once you get it all done, you uh, take it out of the table and you got an overhead little crane there and hook onto it and you put it on a skid and get your tape measure and get everything square. And That moves over to a station where they may do any additional welding if they need to weld anything else onto that. Otherwise, once the headers and the tubes and everything are all put together, that goes to the braze oven. Those may be the main pieces that the company builds, but they're always looking for new opportunities to fill a need in our world. We're also getting the market in the CO2 and environmentally friendly refrigeration compressor. We're hitting the market heavy in Canada, uh, Quebec and Montreal. Those are some of the other areas and also with our water treatment with the Pro 2. About four or five years ago, maybe longer, um, we started moving into the, I started an environmental slant, I guess, if you will, on some products that would be used for environmental reasons. The Pro 2 machine really could affect anybody and everybody who needs clean water for any purpose. Uh, I know right now it's currently not certified to be uh, drinkable, but um, you know what, what it can do is pretty much provide a clean water environment for anybody who who maybe has, has a lack thereof. Uh, you know, you have so many third world countries that people have no uh, good water to use. I mean, it's just terrible, dirty, horrible conditions. Maybe in Africa or countries like that that have water issues that can be cleaned up quickly and effectively, you know, eliminate disease, just be part of that. To me, it's not all about the money in, in life. It's about making an impact and a change that really makes you feel good. And I hope that that's where we end up. And what the Pro 2 is able to do is infuse bad, dirty water with oxygen and essentially take everything out of it in order to make it clean and usable again. It's a bioremediation machine which uh, uses pure oxygen to bioremediate uh, waste. Uh, you can use it for many, many different things. A good example is a uh, wastewater digester in your uh, waste treatment plant. Right now they use blowers which uses just air. Air is 20% oxygen, 80% nitrogen, uh, so in reality you're only putting a small amount of oxygen into the tank. Uh, tanks full of microbes, and if you remember in biology, so the microbes need food, they need oxygen, and basically they eat the waste. Uh, with our product, uh, it's about 10 times, at least 10 times more efficient than blowers uses a three horsepower uh, electrical motor rather than uh, 50 or 100 horsepower, so considerable savings uh, as far as electrical. 
and the, uh, the biological uh, activity uh, is about 10 times quicker than, than normal. You know, it, it kind of creates a water column where you have all the bad stuff either float to the top or go to the bottom. You can scoop it off and then what's left in the middle is just clean water to use uh, for whatever application that's necessary, whether it be putting back to use for other processes in the manufacturing process, whether it's used for municipalities, uh, for wastewater treatment, um, really the possibilities are endless. Actually, it adds capacity. We have a situation here in Blissfield where they were at capacity and uh, they were about to overflow and we were able to put our machine in and in a matter of days they were able to decant about 300,000 gallons of water out of their machine, their digester, and basically save them from having fines or having to shut down the, the systems. To me, of, of the products that we do sell, I don't know why, but I, I, really, I really like that product because I've seen how fast it can make a difference. It's basically pure oxygen, so you're not dealing with chemicals. It's, it's actually what we've done is we've accelerated Mother Nature. And it, it doesn't just have to be oxygen, although that's what 99% of what we've focused on is. You know, it's been doing it for billions of years, and this, it, it's nothing more than a process that nature does anyway. Uh, the microbes are here naturally. They feed on oxygen and whatever food they have. Which the retention rate is uh, over 96% compared to conventional uh, methods which retain about 10% of oxygen. So it's, it's basically a massive leap forward in technology as a whole. And our largest problem in selling the machine so far is the technology is so good most people don't believe it's real. And unfortunately when you, have, you introduce chemicals and other things like the algae bloom, uh, that's, that's purely because there was a lack of oxygen. So if you can put, uh, put the water back in balance biologically, everything's fine. You can clean it up, Those, the algae will go away, uh, you know, everything will be healthy. And so it, it's simple in the fact of what it is, but how we do it is not. It's a, it's a patented process that basically was developed by Wayne State and a heart surgeon for putting high levels of oxygen into blood during surgery. And then they have an offshoot where on the industrial side, they just didn't have a machine that could deliver the, the technology. So that's really where we came in as we, um, we were working on a different machine and one of the water experts from the state of Michigan came in and said, you know, I've been playing around with this particular machine but, or this technology, but don't have a machine to deliver the technology. So we spent about three years perfecting the machine, perfecting the technology, and actually patenting, I think, three or four patents on the machine itself and some of the components of that machine uh, to make it commercially viable, and uh, it's bulletproof. We took it from prototype stage, years of development, to production stage. We took one model, made it into three models, three different sizes for uh, the uh, applications I described as well as anything down to our smallest model, which would be a good for, uh, say, like golf course management, where you could put this on the back of a gator and you could pull up for a day to a pond that may be lacking oxygen, be lacking life, put the machine in there, use it. Uh, within a couple days, that, that pond should be, if, if the right biological activity is in there already, should be clear, beautiful again, and it's just, it's basically like nature, mother nature on steroids, um, is what it, what it allows uh, specific applications to do. Compared to every other product we do, the, I guess the, the different components, like I said, this is a full system, as opposed to most things are, you know, apart, it's a, it, it's, it's a cooler, and it's got, it's steel and some fins, where this is multiple, multiple, you know, 100 different components put together. And it's also very intelligent, we can, uh watch it on our iPhone anywhere in the world. We can dial it up, we can change the parameters, switch how it runs, do anything. So um, that's very important. It's a very intelligent machine and it's uh, that part of the technology I think is important and people, machines and things are moving in that direction. We're targeting other uh, companies as well for, to basically be able to separate their waste oil out. Uh, we're working with a, a local business right now that they're pulling 10% of corn oil out of, out of their what they thought was just their wastewater that they can then resell. So multiple, multiple uses for this technology, but it's basically anything that, would, that a lot of oxygen uh, would be beneficial for, this machine can do into a fluid. You know, water is one of those resources that everybody needs and everybody needs clean water. 
So, you know, for us, we thought of it as an excellent opportunity to help the environment. You know, and we know that that's the direction that people are going, that's the direction that markets are going, is there's this huge green shift and a green trend. And, you know, we kind of wanted to get in on that. And, you know, we've always prided ourselves on trying to make a difference in the community. And what better way to make a difference, not only in our own community, but hopefully in the world, than make a device that cleans water um, that could hopefully affect millions of people. From affecting millions around the world to affecting the families that rely on Blissfield manufacturing for their livelihood, the sense of community and togetherness is strong within these walls. I really think it's a strong sense of family that cultivates the attitude, you know, of wanting to be here. As I was a young kid growing up, walking through the halls of the plant, it was always a great family atmosphere and that's what it seemed like. It's, you know, when I came to work here, it's like I was coming to work with people that I'd already known for years and years. You know, my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my dad, they all care immensely about the people that work with them and uh, that's, that's the biggest thing. We always stress that, you know, if it's, if it's not for the people, we're not here. I think the employees that are here are ones that are not afraid to see something that needs to be done and do it and not have to be told. Even if it isn't under their job title, we all pitch in here and whatever needs to be done happens. You know, we may have a guest coming, you would see us all out cleaning, just tidying up for the guest. I don't know if you see that at other places. We're just, we're just that way. When they come, we want them to feel like they're our family too. Anybody who, who has a corporate mindset of this is my duty, this is my job, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to leave from here. I'm going to start this time, I'm leaving it this time. Uh, I don't get along with them so well, so. <laughs> it's, it's awesome to, to, to be out, to be just around the company in general and 99% and of the time to see someone with a smile on their face and, and to just see that positive attitude flowing throughout the company, which I really think is crucial to, to success and to developing a, a positive work environment especially having a, a place that can provide multiple jobs. You know, you can really help build a community around it. What they did for the community was fantastic, and I really appreciate that. Family comes first. If you have any issue, um, being able to go over and see my kids at school because it's close, it, it just meant so much for me having a family. I mean, it's easier to come in, I mean, obviously. You know, if, if, if it's like a family, you, it's like you're welcome to open the door and come on in. That's how family is. To us, we consider everybody who works here to be part of our family, but they also have their own families. So we think it's very important for them to take time and spend time with their families and friends. When people are overworked, you know, you're not always gonna get the highest level of productivity. So if you can take some time to get a reprieve, spend time with family or whatever that may be, you know, that's important. You know, this is a relaxed attitude of, you know, hey, if you need to get away for a little bit and take care of something, you know, somebody else has your back. We're very relaxed in a lot of what you would say the corporate world would have, so. It means something to be part of the family. You know, also it's said and done, who wouldn't want to be at a place like that? I mean, that's my, my opinion. I, I, if I had to leave and go elsewhere, I would definitely look at what they did for the community. The town of Blissfield is in a better place thanks to the workers and families that surround Blissfield Manufacturing. From a contract to build condensers born out of a misunderstanding to cutting edge green technology, this company plans to be a pillar in this community and the greater world for many years to come. I think that's been one of the keys to the success of the company is the flexibility and being open to uh, looking at, you know, multitude of things that would use whatever our core competencies were. Not only do I think it's important, I think it's essential to survival due to the fact that a lot of the products we have been making since uh, all the way back into the 40s, um, a lot of those have become commodities and it's a fact that low-cost countries for certain products can actually produce the product for less money than we can actually buy the material for to make it. Basically it was if we didn't evolve we we're gonna die um, and, and there's still a lot of those products that we made from a long time ago that we've continued to make um, and w hopefully will continue to make um, although some of them we have seen the volume decrease and have had to react accordingly. You know I want to strive to you know, continue to do great things, you know, in the business and outside of the business. But, you know, I'd love to move the business forward uh, following that green technology path and, you know, take our Pro 2 machines and really change the world with it. You know, that's just the tip of the iceberg as, as far as that's concerned. I mean, this, this industry, that market is just, it's huge. And, you know, for us to think that the Pro 2 is, you know, is, is the pinnacle, I mean, that's, that's totally false. So, I mean, you know, the sky's the limit and, you know, I, I want to, hopefully change the world.